Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Matthias Beckers, um, the nuclear humanist. Uh, but as you can see in the top left uh, top left corner, I'm also chairman of uh, Elisa. And as chairman chairman of Elisa, I uh, work hard to catalyze new nuclear deployments around the world. So our main focus is on the Netherlands at this moment. But I have just finished my uh, atom exit documentary. And I wanted to, you know, help my American friends out because because they are looking down the nuclear cliff at the moment. Now, actually, this is part two of the series. The funny the funny thing is that I'm uh, uh, recording part two first, and that's because uh, part one needs some extra preparation. Um, but this was something that I already had done, so uh, let's let's get into it. Um, what you see here is a list of um, construction licenses uh, that are either issued or withdrawn or suspended in the United States. Now, if you can, uh, if you look closely, you can see that it's uh, it's several different reactor concepts. It's the EPR, it's the EP one thousand, it's the APWR, it's the ESBWR, and there's also an advanced boiling water reactor in here. Now, uh, there are two two uh, nuclear power potential or nuclear power plants dropped off the list here that's uh, Vogel obviously uh, Vogel is, is getting on quite well they're finally finishing it and it's the Aurora by Oklo um, for, for obvious reasons so what you see here it, it is basically a lot of work done by the NRC by the you know the US DOE um by 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 companies uh, you name it this is the, the, this um list represents billions of dollars work already invested into infrastructure work that has not really been built so i wanted to know, I, I want I, I wanted to to show you what would happen if we would normalize this so the first thing that that we want to do is we want to build on the success of the AP one thousand in in Vogel, and with success, you know, I, I say this, knowing full well that this plant has turned out to be much more expensive, late, uh, you name it, but they're finishing it, which is. Uh, a victory in and of itself and now what you should do or what do you the united states should do is say okay what we are going to do is we are going to build all the ap 1000s for which we have calls and we are going to look at we are going to look very um critically at all these plants that also have calls but are of designs with which we have no practical experience so this means eswr abwr uh, apwr and epr so um, all the units that are uh, so what i what i would propose is every dual set every every place where they have two large units planned we will build an equivalent plus capacity of a of uh, ap 1000s so what you get is uh we are going to build an ap 1000 we are going to build ap 1000s in uh victoria county instead of the eswr uh we are going to build three uh ap ap 1000s instead of uh two abwrs in the south texas uh south texas project we are going to build let's see um well this is basically it right yeah there's still the, the there's still comanche peak so at comanche peak we would be building a us apwr 
which we will replace with AP1000s, and that's it. So the rest, which uh, which so the rest of all these projects that are left, uh, I have to I have to bend around the camera to show you. So uh, basically, all what is yellow has turned into AP1000s instead of ESWRs or ABWRs. Now, where there's where there were only one unit planned, we are going to do something different. We are going to build BWRX 300s. So these are boiling water reactors, small units. And why are we going to build small units at these locations? Um, let me let me show you. So what we get is the following. Um, if you, you you could you could potentially build two, uh, a, you could potentially build two AP one thousands at those locations. That would be perfectly fine. So let let's see. Okay, now we have we fixed it. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, satisfy my inner <laughs> my inner demons, right? Um, I'm using the wrong colors here, but it's all right. So what we are doing is um, we're homogenizing this list, basically. So instead of building uh, one, two, uh, three, four, uh, five different reactors, we're only going to build two different reactors. Now, we used to have planned 26 units 26 large reactor pressure vessels that's that's the the way i look at these uh, at these uh, projects reactor pressure vessels and containment buildings because those are the hardest to build those are the hardest to manufacture so we still have a lot of ap 1000s left obviously so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine that's 18 ap 1000 reactor pressure vessels that need to be forged um you know steam generators pumps pipes you name it a whole containment building that needs to be built and then there's like a ton of x300 reactors all six units so that's one two three four five six seven eight eight six unit uh eight six units so that's 48 x300s that need to be built now building 48 x300s is going to be a tall order it's not because it's a small modular reactor that it, that it's an easy reactor you still have a a, a pressure vessel that needs to be forged and, and that's that's the the hardest thing to build in a nuclear um in a nuclear project now if you look at for instance the cost the cost for these in total will be 48 billion right 48 billion and uh let's suppose that um you could build an ap 1000 for 5 billion right so we had 18 so that's uh, 18 times 5 so that's another 90 billion 90 billion that that you would need oh wait a second what i'm doing right now <laughs> let's see 48 billion and 90 billion right so this is quite uh quite the bill that you need to need to pay in order to get a lot of um energy but let's let's not forget this is almost 40 gigawatts 40 gigawatts um if the u.s would build 40 gigawatts of nuclear capacity within the next 20 years we would be tremendously happy but i do think that this is a low figure for what is needed in the u.s now i had this uh, just for just for our amusement i had these uh these charts uh prepared 
Uh, so here you can see, for instance, uh, this is the Bell Bend nuclear power plant. Uh, over here it says Sus Susquehanna Steam Electric Power Station. The funny thing is, you can you can see what type of reactor it is from the containment building that is uh, put around it. Now this is a these are two BB BWRs. These are boiling water reactors. Now if we go to the Bellafonte nuclear power plant, I believe that this one hasn't been finished even. Um, you also see no steam from the steam uh, <clears throat> from from the from the cooling towers. So this one this one hasn't been finished if I'm not if I'm if I'm correct. Uh, this would be this this would be a place where you could build two AP one thousands, right? Uh, the thing that I the the plant that I really like is this one the South Texas. Uh, project plant as you can see it has this huge cooling water reservoir there are two open decked uh, generators here which caused problems earlier this year when the cold snap came to Texas but you can see there's two pressurized water reactors over there and there's room to I mean there's plenty of room here uh, they could build you know if it's if it's room alone they could build a whole lot of whole lot more but the question is whether the cooling reservoir is large enough to facilitate that i don't know it's a large cooling reservoir because if you look at houston right let, 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 let's let's just uh let, let's see if i can move this thing now ah oh, that's that's a pity now i have <laughs> now, now i've changed it up a lot but in any case um Another cool power plant is Comanche Peak, for instance. Uh, Comanche Peak is right inside a reservoir. So I believe that there's only one. This is also one of those open-decked turbine uh, buildings. Uh, I believe that Comanche Peak actually had just one unit. Let me see. Comanche Peak, where are you? Um, boop, 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 boop. There it is. Yeah, Comanche Peak had two units planned. So what we are doing here at Comanche Peak is we're replacing two US APWRs, which are 1,700 megawatts per unit, and replace them with four AP1000s. Now, the beauty of this is that you get learning uh, opportunities, especially if you build four. Stagger them, you know, start building the first, then... Uh, half a year to a year later start the second unit half a year to a year later start the third unit and so forth and so on so what you get is you, you got to learn the lay of the land uh, you know this is this is helpful with uh, for instance logistics how to move in parts uh, where you can store them temporarily uh, how to get cranes in position uh, you name it this is this is incredibly helpful if you want to do if you want to actually help nuclear uh you know gain momentum so what you see here these prices right uh, so what you see here 48 billion for those x300s uh 90 billion i mean let's just tally it up shall we uh so uh this plus this plus this yeah i could have could have done like what is it six times 1800 <laughs> would have been faster right but you know what i've started this anyway um i'm taking i'm taking you for a ride so so this is 14 gigawatts 14 gigawatts and if you if you divide uh 48 by 14 right equals 48 uh, 48 dividing by 14 then you get a uh, 3.4 uh, 3.4 billion uh, per per gigawatt so that's not very expensive something's off here this is this means that i that i cocked up because i know it should be lower <laughs> i know it should be lower let's see what did i what did i do wrong it's all six it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So it's uh, um, eight 
times oh yeah so it should be oh well whatever uh eight times six i am so yeah so some something is wrong somewhere it's off it's off i know it's off <laughs> i will I, I will i will put the calculation in the description below so you can check it but in any case um just by deploying nuclear reactors at places where already a lot of bureau bureaucracy has been done a lot of calculations have been done means that you can short track these the, the these projects in essence there where there are ap1000s planned you basically move ahead with them start building new units within two years or so and i would bet you that you could have you know you can you can build at least half of what is what is up here before 2030 and actually commission it put it on the grid um those x300s that's a different story um I believe that you know if you if you want to put all this capacity online it will take you up until 2036 or something like that but once you have done it um, a supply chain will have been built for all these units and this means that you can actually push forward instead of just um, building plants where you had plants planned uh <laughs> so building nuclear plants where you wanted to build a nuclear plant in the first place you could actually start tackling fossil fuel uh plants like coal plants and gas plants and this is something somebody uh on twitter always says a lot about he says you know why are you all trying to be angry when nuclear power plants get shut down which is what the first video will be up will be about and why are you not angry when people shout about you know fossil fuel plants and i'm like of course fossil fuel plants are just as uh, just as important in terms of uh, jobs in terms of economic activity and that's why i would always 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 advocate for replacing a coal fire power plant or replacing a gas fire power plant directly on site with X300 units, or in the future, perhaps IMSRs, for instance, um, or Multex, or, or some other unit. But at this moment, what I'm looking for is something that we can, that, that, that we can replicate as much as possible. The IMSR will be a game changer once they have their production facility to build the nuclear reactor built the pumps you know built all the components that are necessary for a site things will speed up but until then we need to build what is good now what we can do now which is ap1000 obviously so that's why most of it is ap1000 and the other half is a bwrx 300 just because i want to see uh, uh that uh, product speed up as well and, and 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 subsequently we need uh, uh, molten salt reactors to speed up we need fast reactors to speed up but it only happens if we first learn that we need to serialize one reactor after another and build, trying to build six different reactors is too much uh, so let's start with two let's start uh, planning these out in the next five or six years and then after those five or six years are over and we are actually building all these units or we have you know uh, uh financing done and they uh, within let me let me let me say it this way we should be able to start building all the ap1000 units that are on this list within the next six years and then we get a, a window of let's say eight years that we are constructing them uh, in the end uh, building one of these units will only take four years you will have perfected the the building of an ap1000 in the end if you have built 20 units or some some something around that order you will have perfected it same can be said for the x300 and then 
in 2030, uh, let's say 2028, you start planning out the construction of 40 IMSRs. Let's 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 put a big hairy audacious goal there. 40 IMSRs. You you start planning them in 2028 until 2030, and then you start construction in you know at the latest 2032, building up until 2040, and then in 2032 you start planning the next best best thing, which may be natrium, which may be something else, but you start planning it, but do it as really make it a serialized effort. Make sure that you put out as much of these units as possible. You really want economics. You really want the you know the economics of numbers to 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 come on your side instead of you know because what we are doing now is we're scaling down all the the entire nuclear industry is scaling down. They're going down from economy economies of scale to economies of numbers so 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 that's why i would say uh um pick the winner you know the winner quote unquote winner which is at this moment the ap1000 build a shitload of ap1000s start thinking about building x300s building imsrs uh maybe throw in you know uh, a natrium here and there but make sure that you get the numbers and also uh, this is very important but this is a this is a, at a t totally different scale that's the aurora you know the aurora powerhouse by oklo um if the uh, if they can build 100 units that would be awesome it wouldn't it wouldn't matter on a large decarbonization scale that much but it's a cool concept and i think that they deserve uh, to have their numbers, their, their units deployed in large numbers as well. But I think the sweet spot is between 200 and 500 megawatts for a new reactor. Um, and especially if you make sure that you build at least four or six or eight, you know, build sets as much as possible. So this is my video about the U.S., the the construction license, uh, the combined construction license uh, licenses that have been have been put out onto the market, which have been well not put out onto the market. These licenses have been issued, uh, or you know, some of them have been withdrawn, some of them have been have been have been suspended. But there's work there. Even there, there has been work done. Millions have already been spent. And this, you know, restarting, restarting these construction licenses would mean a heck of a lot. You could expedite it because you already have paperwork in there. Um, save money, save time, start building. That's basically what it's all about. So thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.